talk about politics and the deployment yep. of that approach. Um, we're talking about a large system yep. where there's lots of um, conscious intent or not yep. to make sure that what we are is what we say we are. Yep. And so yep. for you as a, for someone who's going for a job, you want to find out whether people, mm. the organisation is what it says it is. What it is. So yep. it puts an ad in the paper. Yep. Um, it says it's this. Right. If you go to a job interview, your interest is, is it really this? Right. Or is it something right. else? Right. That's very interesting. You know, and it suggests that politics is really embedded deeply in all aspects of an organisation. Its processes, its, yep. uh, its structures, its culture. Absolutely. Um, and then tying that with the influence, you know, as someone that's uh, done the research in an, into an organisation and is thinking about joining an organisation, how do I know uh, whether the influence through politics is, you know, is going to be good or bad. Yeah, it's a tough call, tough yeah, question. Yeah. Um, so let's go back and let's go back and just look at. So I, in, in my research of preparing today, yep. I, we all know that the line that says power corrupts. Yep. And absolute power corrupts yep. absolutely. Yep. And I think that's a truism. Um, so with that in the back of our mind as a reality there are some political behaviours or skills that we need to develop. One is we need the ability to network okay. and to develop relationships that enhance our career progression. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that means you are going to actively influence your career path. Right. And obviously right. there's going to be people who support you in that development. Yeah. And, you know, a qualification is a starting point for a career progression right but how you present yourself and yeah. how you are in organizational life will determine your success yeah based on your strategic aims of what you want in your career so networking is yeah. one skill yeah that you need to develop and that's very well supported by research yeah so and so the idea yeah, is that yeah. you build a system yeah. in your own in yourself about the map of relationships because even right. though someone is very senior in an organisation and has yeah. formal power, yeah. they may not be the decision maker. Right. It right. could be one or two levels down a person yeah. who is the centre of gravity for sure. all conversation. Right. And they right. know. Right. Um, so networking is one. Yeah. The other thing is a concept of reciprocity, that if, if in your role someone helps you, yeah. then you should be conscious of giving back to that so it builds a relationship of reciprocity right and right. that's another political skill that right. ensures you build healthy relationships which you can then depend upon because mm. it may well be that you end up in a meeting and yeah. if you know people well and they know you they're yep. more likely and you're more credible when right. you present your picture of why we should go down path A sure. and not path B. Sure. Um, um, just on the reciprocity, it's very interesting uh, that you brought that up. Um, um, I wonder if uh, uh, one can be more proactive in building reciprocity uh, politically. So yep. doing a favour uh, for a target or a target of influence um, based on knowledge that that person down the track will be obligated to return a favour. So rather than uh, returning a favour that's been done for you, you know, could we use it more proactively and yeah. do favours to... So you pass something forward. Yeah, um, yeah, with the... Um, so it can be quite political as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So I use a simulation called Red Blue and it talks about adversarial acts. Right. Which withdraw yep. from the relationship yep. versus a collaborative act which means that I might help you, right? And you may scratch your head and say, "Why are you helping me?" Right. But I'm actually helping you because one, that's what I want to do. Yeah. I think my job will be done better if you do your job better. So if right. you're a supplier or a customer, yep. I might actively go and do something. Yep. And when I do something that we might call it a random act of kindness, yep. <laughs> but I'm actually doing it consciously because I know that our yep. business outcome we're interdependent on each other. If you're more successful, I'm more successful. Right. Yep. And if I've done something that helps you be successful, yep. then you should be conscious of also seeing me as part of your network yep. and then look for opportunities to support Which me in a similar way. Yep. So it yep. creates this reciprocity. Yep. So the third aspect mm. is 
the ability to build coalition and we've spoken a little bit already that you need to talk to people and understand where they're at so if you're about to be part of a decision making process yep. it's good to go and meet people who are part of that decision making process right. build relationship with them ask them yep. where they are in the context of this decision right ask them why they're there right and build an understanding of the thinking that's going on so when you actually get to the decision making process there will be no surprises and right. so the Japanese do this incredibly well. Most yep. decisions are already made before they get to the meeting, <laughs> okay? Yep. In a very clean, hygienic, socially constructive way. Right. So coalition yep. building, and coalition building is consciously influencing people. Sure. In groups. Okay. Yep. Um, so the other three that I, other three that are worth mentioning, so we've done networking, reciprocity, coalition building. Controlling information is another one. Mm. In a political environment, I will consciously control information so I know more than anybody else. Right. Because information is power. Right, right. Okay? Right. And in a political process, yep. it happens all the time. It's very unhealthy in organisational life if people are only sharing parts of the information. Because when we come to decision making, yep. the best decisions are the ones that we implement fully and deliver the value that we expect them to deliver. Right. And the only way to achieve that is to have a holistic picture building process. Mm. So we build a picture yep. of the issue. We have we have clear criteria that we're all going to use to make a decision. Yep. We make a decision and then we implement and look back on that decision and see the success we achieved. Right. Right. If the political process is active and we all only have part pictures, yep. we'll never make the best decision. Right. Or we'll make a decision that suits you, but not us. Right. Okay. You know, so that's when yep. you get uh, empire building. Yeah. It's why, it's when you get vested interests playing mm -hmm. out. And they're all examples of an organisational culture that's less than best. Right. Okay, and okay. we'll talk about that a little bit. Yep. So, controlling information, the, the other two, um, managing impressions. So yeah. very important yeah. that when you apply for a job, um, your first impression is your job application mm. and your resume. Yeah. And so that's the so if you think that needs to get me an interview, yeah. that's the job of that process right. only. Yeah. You don't need to do anything other than get an interview. Yeah. And then in an interview, there's a second impression. Right. How will I present myself? So I, I need to think about how I'm going to dress, how I'm going to be, yeah. the personality I'm going to take, how I'm going to listen, how I'm going to interact, the questions I'm going to ask, and how I respond. Right. So that's a very significant second impression. Right. And then often, you know, that third impression is when you turn up to work and are you what you yeah. created right. as an impression in right. the first and second. Right. So managing impressions. Yeah. There is uh, quite a bit of literature in that area, in, in the impression management and career success lit, uh, sort of domain. And um, one of, so it, it does seem to uh, lead to more promotions, more likelihood of being promoted um, on the job if you're managing your impressions, depending on the tactic that you're using. Yeah. So where supervisors <coughs> see these as genuine sort of uh, attempts to uh, show a favorable impression, it can generate liking and liking transmits uh, more promotions for that employee. Yep. But where it's perceived as a little bit yep. sort of false or manipulative, yep. it can backfire. A Absolutely. Bit well. So yes, yeah. so you need to be careful and you yep. need to be congruent yep. and you need to be truthful and ethical exactly. in those impressions. Right. And what we're talking about is being conscious. Yep, yep. That, you know, and I remember in the 1980s there was the research about um, Swedish organisation and they spoke about moments of truth. Oh, yeah. So these impressions yeah. are moments of truth, right? but you better make sure that they're aligned because yep. if you give different impressions, people will pick up that you're not the whole thing breaks down. Yeah, yeah. It breaks down. Yeah. Yeah. The last one, um, and more on the dark side, is this attacking and blaming. So it's another political behaviour. Okay. It's another influencing skill. Um, not, yeah. I'm not a big fan of it, yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> but it is a coping yeah. mechanism that we all have to experience mm. and we will experience um, in organisational life and if we can understand why that person is behaving that way yeah. then that helps us to see the system and right. understand 
what that person is doing and why. Sure. So yeah. there's some there's some political behaviours 